presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Minnesota. Sunday fun day as the Twins and Astros are ready to play the rubber game of this three game weekend series here in Houston and Twins baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by State Farm. The Twins gained a game last night in the American League Central. Take a look at the up to date standings. The Twins are just a game and a half back of the Indians. Kansas City looming three back as Oakland rallied for a 5-3 win while the Twins were winners here in Houston last night. Kyle Gibson gets the ball for Paul Molitor's team. It's been an up and down season for Gibby this year for Minnesota, but he did see last night a template for beating this potent offense from Houston. So we watched Irvin Santana keep the Astros off balance, changing speeds, attacking the zone when he was on. Kyle Gibson knows it'll be a tough task, but there's a game plan out there to beat this team. You know, one thing that I've, I've kind of seen is they just don't waste their bats. You know, they uh, they pick their times to take big swings, and then with guys on base, they make sure they put the ball in play and, and uh, you know, sometimes cut their swing down and then pick their spots to, you know, try to hit the ball out of the park. So, um, you know, that makes it tough on a pitcher. You know, if you got a guy who always goes up there taking big hacks, you, know, you can kind of pitch, you know, to some of the holes that that presents. The Twins will need the A game from Kyle Gibbs. And when we come back, Dick Bramer and Torrey Hunter with their A game and a plan on how to slow down the best offense in baseball. Twins baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by Toyota. Tested, trusted, Toyota. Toyota, let's go places. By Century Link, connecting you to the power of the digital world. By Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, for the everyday competitor in all of us. And by Jeep, the official vehicles of summer are ready for what your summer brings. Hurry in to your nearest Jeep dealer for the clearance event of the summer.
The Twins have played their best baseball on the road. They've got a chance to come up with a very impressive road series win against the best team in baseball, the Houston Astros. Dick Framer and Tory Hunter with you for the final game of this brief road trip. The hallmark of this Twins team this year has been its ability to bounce back from tough and demoralizing losses and that's exactly what they did once again last night. Yeah you talk about Santana man he did a great job last night a couple times he had the bases loaded and he did a good job of getting out of that. I mean this guy has a lot of fight he's he's done it all year whenever they had a losing streak you got Santana coming on the mound he was going to kill that losing streak and uh, I think the bullpen you know last night they came in and they pitched well you talk about Rogers talk about Duffy they got out of jams you know all night last night and that's what they've been doing all of the first half you know a game like last night you go home you think about it how can you start trusting yourself that hey we can get out of jams anytime we want to like tonight these guys gonna have a little more fight because they believe they can get it done we'll see if the twins can in fact uh, win this series and they'll have to contend with a very good lineup led by I guess you'd have to call him a veteran now Jose Altuve. No oh, Jose Altuve is very special man. This guy has done a lot of great things in his short career since 2012 man. This guy has been been hitting the ball hard against the twins. He really he's a pest. You know I, I think he's that one term that we used to call us piranhas. He is the piranha against the twins and uh, he's been doing a lot of great things he's been hitting balls out uh, opposite field like he's a uh, little milk Miguel Cabrera Cabrera and you talk about multi hit games he's had more multi hit games than he's had oh hit uh, over games I mean uh, four hit games only Miguel Cabrera is number one he has he's second and since 2012 Miguel Cabrera is right there on top of him he's right next to him breathing down his neck this guy can really hit the ball put the ball in play and he he really helps the ball club out I love to have him as a teammate. Well the lineup that the Houston Astros have is very very productive the twins will try to match that lineup and get out of town with another win and set up what they hope will be a really good homestand when they start tomorrow night against the Yankees. up the stats. Dozier with a diving catch behind the second base bag. Great stop by Dozier. What a double play. Wow. Drive to left field. That ball's gone. A home run. A two run walk off home run for Brian Dozier. Just like everyone expects. He's grown to be a leader. Smart about the game, go out, play the game hard. Good guy, good teammate. He's always having a good time, and uh, you know, it's a lot of fun to be around. There goes another one. Are you kidding me? 
We know where Brian Dozier has been. One question remains, where does he go from here? And actually, there's one more question. Will he get a first pitch fastball to hit <laughs> this afternoon? No chance. Because he's homered uh, in the leadoff spot, leading off the ball game in each of the last two games. Paul Molitor hoping that his team can start the second half with what might be their most impressive series win of the year. This Astros team is really, really good. They do everything well. And the Menards batting order for the finale. Brian Dozier in the leadoff spot. Then Robbie Grossman, Miguel Sano, Max Kepler, Kenny Vargas, Eduardo Escobar, Eddie Rosario, Chris Jimenez, and A. Ray Adrianza. And Mike Fires has done a really good job since the Twins last saw him at Target Field, keeping the ball in the ballpark. Mike, Mike Fires is a veteran pitcher, man. He's, you know, he's had a no hitter, you know, with the Astros in 2015. And All right, what is he going to get here? Something off There's speed? No you way is a fastball. It's a changeup. Has to be. Are you kidding me? Fastball at the knees, and he takes it for strike one. He was the only one to throw a <laughs> fastball down and away. That was a good, good, good spot. Dozier at the second pitch Friday night for a home run. The first pitch last night. There's an off-speed pitch, missing. Right. It's one and one. It's early. Pitchers hate to throw off-speed early because they don't want these guys to see their off-speed this early. They kind of, you know, establish the fastball and then throw it off-speed. But Dozier, he changed the mindset of the, of a pitcher. Tap foul. Another on speed up. pitch. Yep. Can't give him a fastball. They want the pitch away, but they keep throwing a middle in and he crushes it. Next night, same thing. He went back. <laughs> he, anything middle middle in, he drops the head on it. That top hand is dangerous. And he chases a high fastball out of the strike zone and starts this game with a strikeout. Fires did a great job of mixing up the pitches early. Like I said earlier, pitchers hate to throw their off speed that early in the in the game. Northland four defense for the Astros, middle of the pack, I guess, among the 15 American League teams in the field. Aoki gets left field, Marisnik in center, Reddick in right, Brakeman, Gonzalez, El Tuve, Guriel, and McCann back behind the plate. He caught Friday night's game. One down, here's Robbie Grossman. Mention that Fires has done a really good job keeping the ball in the ballpark. In his first nine starts, up to his start against the Twins at Target Field, he had given up 18 home runs and 46 in the third innings. The pop up near second base. Gonzalez, right behind the bag, makes the catch out number two. Since his start against the Twins at Target Field, he's been a much better pitcher. He's only given up one home run in his last eight starts, covering 47 innings. You know, in the first seven games of the season, he had a 5-7 ERA. You know, he's turned it around a lot. He's gone four and three with a 2-6-5 ERA, you know, with 56 strikeouts in the last 10 starts. Two down, bases empty for Miguel Sano. They say what he's done, and this will come as a, as a terrible blow to one of the biggest proponents of the cut fastball I know, Tim Laudner, doing the pre and post game <laughs> show. Is he scrapped his cutter? He has scrapped his cutter. I hadn't seen him. I, I checked out some video. He hadn't thrown it in a while. And uh, he's throwing more change ups, you know, and more righty righty change ups. And I think he's uh, trusting that more, and that's his go to pitch. His fastball is a little sneaky, has good spin, spin rate. He throws 88. 80 to 90 and uh, guys are late on it. So the spin rate it, it must be a sneaky fastball it plays around 93 but it's only 88 to 90. So it's a little sneaky sneakiness to it. One and two to Sano. And I mentioned Tim Laudner's name in sarcasm of course because Tim has <laughs> never liked the cut fastball and uh, he thinks Fires and every other pitcher in the big leagues should just get rid of it. Is it? Is you, you think it's because of injuries or uh, because it's not an effective pitch? He thinks it takes something off of a true sinking or four seam fastball. And now three and two to Sano with Kepler on deck. Whew. I don't know, man. I've seen a lot of cutters that I didn't like. But I've Mariano seen some, Rivera. Right. 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 You Kluber. Mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, you got a lot of players that that lip. Uh, Paul Bird made a career out of cutters. There are exceptions to the Lardner rule. And on the outside corner, Sano thought it was ball four. And Fires has a couple of strikeouts in a one-two-three first inning. Above 500, boy, are they above 500. 12 and 6, AJ Hinch is against the Twins over the last couple of years. 31 games over 500, and here is their Menards batting order. George Springer DHing today, then Altuve, Reddick, McCann, Gurriel, Gonzalez, Bregman, Aoki, and Marisnik. And Kyle Gibson going for the Twins, his 17th start of the year. Kyle Gibson, he. He pitches pretty well against the Astros. He has good numbers. He's three and zero with a one one point nine three ERA against the Astros. He's doing pretty well against these guys. And he'll need to do a lot of that. First pitch strikes. Even Irvin Santana didn't have a typical game for him in that regard, but he was able to gut it out through six innings, walking five. Down and away, one and one. Gibson, Gibson is a more of a sinker baller, and he keeps the balls. If he keeps the ball down, he'll get a lot of create a lot of ground balls, a lot of double plays. But every once in a while, he gives up the long ball. 16 home runs allowed in 61 and a third innings. Swing and a miss. And Springer again swings from his heels. One and two. That's my type of guy. Swing hard. In case you hit it. Yeah, just in case you hit it. You just never know. Two strikes now you cut down. One and two from Gibson to Springer. Breaking ball backhanded by Jimenez. This impressive lineup continues to produce runs. Much more uh, productivity than anybody else in the major leagues. They scored 90 runs in July. That's 21 more than the next team. That's mashing. 2 2. And now a full count. Santana got away with it last night, but it would be behoove any pitcher to not issue any free passes because this team is hitting 290 as a team with a lot of power. The last thing they need is free base runners. It was one and two, now it is three and two. Left center field. Calm Zion down, folks. Out there. Calm down, we got a guy there. One down. And that'll bring up Altuve. Different look for the Twins out in the field with Buxton on the disabled list. Granite has been out there for a couple of games. 
uh, left field and then center field. Grossman, Rosario, and Kepler, the outfielders today. The Northland Ford defense has Escobar at third, Sano DHing, Adrianza Dozier up the middle, Vargas at first, and Jimenez behind the plate. Mighty Mouse is in the lineup. Paul Molitor said he wanted to get everybody in the lineup after having not played for four days because of the All Star break. The last thing you want is for players to sit with the ball grounded up the middle of base hit for all two. That's the magic wand I was talking about. His ball has eyes. A one out single. Softly hit ground ball, but right up the middle for a single. Seeing eye single. His ball has eyes. Look at this. That magic wand, he just shot the ball in the middle. That's a high chopper. You don't know. You should be out, but he finds holes somehow. It's unbelievable. I'm never that lucky. You were that lucky from time to time. It depends on the hot streak. Here's Josh Reddick. And if you're a primarily sinker ball pitcher like Gibson, you just have to take it bats like that. He got a ground ball. It just happened to find a hole. Now you hope you get another one off the bat of this guy. Well, I could tell you the plan of attack on this guy, on Gibson, is because he keeps the ball down, he throws the sinker and the cutter and slaughter. You want to get the pitch up, and that's the only one that stays flat. So their plan of attack today is to get him up. This one pounded into the turf. Vargas will tag Reddick and on the play. Altuve going to second and with two away. Let's go to Kevin Gorg. Thanks, Dick. It's time for our car soup scoop. We'll start with Taylor Rogers, that four out hold last night. Asked him about getting confidence when your manager puts you in a game with the bases loaded like that. He said, now you don't get confidence from the manager doing that. You get confidence from surviving that situation. He said, I've been better this year in those spots, and I'm gaining confidence from that. Kenny Vargas, who just made that play, said that day off did wonders for him. Got a workout in, recovered well, feels good out in the field, feels like he's almost back to 100%. Other side of the infield, Eduardo Escobar, hadn't played yet in this series. Said he hadn't had a lot of time other than in the cage. He said he's going to see the ball, hit the ball, and just react and try to bring the energy he loves to bring to the game, guys. All right, thank you, Kevin. Two down, and now here's McCann taking outside ball one. Kevin Gorg looks good in baby blue. It makes his face more baby-ish. Okay. No. I don't know that that's what he's shooting for, but. He looks younger. He looks younger in baby blue. You should wear okay. that all the time. It fits you. 1-0 and oh to Brian McCann. Grounded into the shift. Dozier has plenty of time to throw him out. A pop up and then three ground balls. Gibson has a scoreless first as we head to the second. Astros have been very good even though they've had some problems keeping their key starters healthy including their ace Dallas Keuchel He's been on the disabled list a couple of times with some neck discomfort he will start a rehab assignment tomorrow in the Corpus Christi 
and uh, it's been an, uh, a hot and cold season for him in terms of being able to play not being able to play and this Astros lineup as impressive as it is they really need to get him back and healthy so they have the luxury with a 15 and a half game lead of taking their time with him. Yeah I mean no reason to rush him back let him go down there and get some quality stars and you know he should they should treat a Razorback that way. <laughs> Arkansas bias we keep hearing about. Uh -huh. Yeah, I am. One strike to Kepler. Stroke foul. Kepler having a good month of July, hitting 421 this month. And hitting cleanup, trying to offer some protection to Miguel Sano. It's a different lineup again today without Joe Maurer. Paul Molitor talked about the uh, wisdom or lack of it in asking Maurer, who came off the disabled list, to play. Two games in less than 24 hours. Swan and missed, and Kepler strikes out. Fires has three K's already in the game. You, you look at his fastball. His fastball is only 89 miles an hour, but guys are it's by guys. It's it's right down the pipe, and you can't even you know uh, jump on it. Look at this fastball. It's 89 miles an hour. It's right down the pipe, and, it, and he's late on it. There's no movement on it at all. No, it's a it's a sneaky fastball. It's 89, but it's playing as 93, 94. Here's Vargas with one gone in the second. Outside, ball one. You know, Fires, I faced him in 2015. I had an opportunity to face him with Milwaukee and with the Astros. And, you know, every once in a while when he pitches in to right, he, he lets one go. And it's always at your head. And that's kind of uncomfortable. I remember him uh, hitting John Carlos Stanton in the face and knocking him out landing him on the DL Stan still wears that jaw guard on his batting helmet sometimes. Yeah and it just sometimes it gets away from him because it's just so sneaky it's hard to get out of the way. Inside now it's three and oh to Vargas. Clint's need Vargas to start swinging a productive bat again and he needs that as well. Takes a strike. Twins are going to add Bartolo Colon to the roster on Tuesday. There's some other situations regarding the roster, Greg Breslow and, and some others that will uh, require some roster movement. Vargas would be well served to start swinging a hot bat. Wow. Oh, that really? Hit a ton. My goodness. Well, exclamation point. Hot bat. Wow. <laughs> That was two thirds of the way into the second level here, and it's one to nothing. And for Fires, just the second home run he's allowed in his last nine starts. Wow, man, that was hit a long ways. That that was hit like like man child. There it is, the ball right down the middle. Wasn't too sneaky. It was 86, so it played as 90. He can hit that. Man, look at this sound. Oh my God, that sounds so great. That's sweet music to a hitter's ears. Especially in an indoor ballpark. Oh, you know, it just kind of echoes for a while. Man, that sounds great. One That's... nothing twins, and now Eduardo Escobar. Come on, Mighty Mouse, do it again. Pitch taken low, ball one. Vargas had the advantage of having a hitter's count. They measured at 452 feet, but it was a 3 1 pitch. And when you've got an upper 90s at best fastball and it's pretty straight. This one sliced to the left side and back into the seats. Marcus was looking for a fastball got one. Right down the middle to make it one to nothing. Vargas I could tell you he can be you look at what happened to David Ortiz's career. You know Tom Kelly always wanted him to go the opposite way. And he forced him to go that way. When he got to Boston, he was able to hit that green monster and go the other way because he was taught that. And um, I got to tell you, man, once he figures it out, hit that ball, he has the power to hit to all fields. He's a complete hitter. He's a better hitter. They won't do that shift too much anymore. And uh, I'll take my chances with that. Soft liner to Gonzalez for out number two. And that'll bring up Rosario. And Vargas has a chance to be special. We're just waiting on him. And of course the advantage he has over not that I'm, he's not going to be the next David Ortiz but he's a switch hitter and if he can get his swing going from the right side of the plate then he becomes an especially 
dangerous hitter against both righties and lefties. Did you know um, in high school I switched hit? I didn't know that. Yeah, and some guy told me, he said, would you try to work on both or would you try to be the best at one? And I was like, wow, okay. So I just stayed right handed and I it was less work. It worked you, out okay, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, you have to put in more work. It's the same amount of work you have to put in your left side and your right side. You have to do it, and it's going to take extra work. Coming into play today, a hundred point difference between Vargas's left handed average and right handed average. Dribbled up the line, foul, and it's one and one. It's, it's tough because there's more righties in the game than lefties, so he's going to have less chances as a, a right handed hitter, and it's going to be, you know, it could be a week or two before he sees a lefty and now he's uncomfortable he hadn't seen it the pitch seems faster it's just a, a different feel and different look for the right handed uh, side for Vargas. Yeah foul and then you finally after not having seen much left handed pitching you finally go to Boston and then you get David Price and Chris Sale. Oh yeah that was, I mean most of the lefties in the game are dominant you, know, you don't find that that lefty that. That throws a two seamer and he throws 87 and you know you don't find the Moyers anymore and uh, so as these guys are filthy these days Rosario strikes out two more strikeouts for Mike Fires but he threw one to Kenny Vargas and Vargas crushed it to make a one to nothing I eat for lunch fastball. One to nothing. And today's cold hard fact brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. The Astros set a record for strikeouts in a season just a few years ago. And now they're trying to do something that only two other teams have done since 1913. And that is lead the league in slugging percentage. Ball chopped up the line. Escobar gets the first hop and fires the first. And another quick ground ball out for Gibson. And have the fewest strikeouts in the major leagues. The transformation here with this Houston lineup, they have changed some of the parts around, but you're talking about the Altuves, Springers, uh, guys like that uh, who have just really done a great job cutting way down on their strikeouts. Now, Springer's maybe not the best example. He's still going to strike out about 150 times this year, but as a team, they've just done a phenomenal job. Oh yeah, man. You, and Gonzalez, still the core players here: Gonzalez, Altuve, Springer, and a, you know, a couple other guys. These guys have been here and they grew up in this organization, and they've they've learned. They've been through the fire. They've been through the ringer, and they've actually, you know, uh, uh, figured some things out. So you see what the Astros have done, and you see what Aaron Judge has done in one season. He was. Very strikeout prone last year, and now he's got better plate discipline, swings at strikes uh, almost exclusively now. 
and uh, might be on his way to both a rookie of the year and MVP uh, award this year. It's, it's the mentality of the player. You know, the player has great character and say, hey, you know what? I struggled in this area and I, you know, have constructive criticism. Somebody gave it to him and he said, you know what? I'm going to clean up my weaknesses. I'm going to work on it. And it's on the individual. You know, whoever that player is, he has to go out and, uh, and work his butt off. Check swing and it's one and two. Gonzalez 0 for 8 in his matchups with Kyle Gibson. Look at this shift. I don't, I'm amazed. He should not hit into that. Just hit it to Escobar. A little bit low, and it's 2 and 2. Like I said earlier, their approach is to get him up. If he swings at this pitch down, he's going to hit it to the shift, into the shift. Gibson is a ground ball pitcher, so you have to get these pitches up. So all you youngsters out there, if you see anybody with sink on their pitch, make sure you get it up higher and swing at every pitch waist high. There you go. Into the ground again, tailing fastball. And he hit it to that side. But you have to protect that. That was near the outside corner, so you still have to yeah. swing at it. It was in the dirt. No, I mean, you don't have to protect that. It was closer, yeah, but but I've seen guys in the major leagues that can shoot that ball the other way and hit it foul that way. You have to work on it. You have to put in the work and put in the time. Down the line, but foul. Still hit it that way. Just about everybody in the Houston lineup has punished Twins pitching. The Twins have actually done a decent job since the rough start Friday night by Jose Barrios keeping this lineup in check. But boy, did they have fun at Target Field last year. Gonzalez might be, he might be the best utility man in Major League Baseball. Right now, I, yeah, absolutely. In a shortstop today for Correa gets the day off, and Gibson comes inside. With a breaking ball and gets a strikeout, two down. It's amazing when you you know that you pitch well against a team. I said this several times this series. The guy's confidence goes up, and Cal Gibson's confidence. Look at these these pitches. The pitches away, 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 and then you know off speed in. Just trying to pitch away to get him to turn in and hit the ball into the shift because you know he's not going to go the other way. Alex Bregman will bat moving up to the seventh spot of the batting order this afternoon. Breaking ball hits the corner. Bregman's more of a middle end guy. Short arms, short bat, short swing. Be careful. Stay away. To left. Oh. And Grossman plays it on a hop for a two out single. Kind of left for an off speed up, kind of down the middle, and he was able to capitalize on that. We'll bring up Aoki. Aoki getting the start in left field. Aoki actually grinds out at bats. He and he has no problem going the other way, and you can tell there's no shift on him. You know, he got the, the third baseman where he needs to be, the shortstop, the second baseman. Everybody's where they need to be because he sprays the balls to all field. He's not afraid to go the other way. Twins are playing him actually in the outfield, bunched up the middle. They're giving away some of the right field line and an awful lot of the left field line. Right, because he sprays the ball left center to right center, He's in, and that that's a good hitter. You know, complete here. He might not hit for power or anything like that, but he usually hits for a decent average. One and oh to Aoki. And there's a strike. It's a good pitch. Gibson much more aggressive so far here today. 23 pitches, 15 strikes. If he can be more consistent and pitch the way he's pitching these, these last two innings, this guy can, he can be special in the major leagues. Just have to believe it himself. Talking about Gibson. Gibson. Yep. 
And I think that's been part of the frustration because the graph line for Gibson in his career was certainly headed in the right direction. I mean, you up not. until last year. You know, it, ERA was coming down, the innings pitch were going up, and it was exactly the model the Twins were uh, hoping for in terms of getting somebody to ascend into the status of a number two, number three starter. But then last year, some uh, injury issues and a bad year, and this year's been uh, even worse statistically. But now, all that said, in his last four uh, starts on the road, two and one with an ERA of under three. So yeah. I guess that's the definition of being inconsistent, though, isn't it? Well, if you're injured, if you're injured, you can't do anything as a hitter or a pitcher. You actually try to, you know, manipulate and, and try to find a way to where you can feel comfortable, but it's, not, but it's not you. It's not who you are. And it actually, you lead pitches up, um, you know, your breaking pitch is not breaking as much. So if you're injured or tired or fatigued or whatever it may be, um, you, you're not going to be yourself. Two and one, two Aoki. Like a changeup, and he took it for a strike. Two and two. I think 2016, and that's what happened to him. He, if he was injured or sore or any kind of way and tried to stay out there, he's going to have a bad year. In 2015, I thought he pitched well. You know, especially early on, he mm -hmm. pitched pretty well. We we lost Santana, and he and he stepped up and was our guy. You look at the opponent batting average for Gibson, 2014, 258. Well, that's pretty good. 2015 opponent batting average 252 that's even better yeah and then last year jumped up to 298 injuries soreness and this year it's 317 if we had Santana in 2015 we definitely go to go to the playoffs no doubt he was of course on the sidelines with the PED suspension before he ever threw a pitch to the twins here's a ball hit to center and another two out base hit. That's what I was talking about earlier. This guy's a complete hitter. He hits the ball all over the field and he was able to hit the ball up the middle. And now Jake Marisnik will bat. And here's the pitch. He left the pitch up. You know, and the ball up. He shouldn't have hit that ball, but he's such a great hitter, complete hitter, that you know he's able to get to that pitch and Drop the bat head on it. Everything down, 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 and then you let one slip a little bit, bring it up, and there it is and hit into center field. That's their attack. Their plan of attack today is to get that pitch up. The ball stays flat when you get a, a sinker baller up. Three singles against Gibson. So far, no damage done on the run column. Here's the number nine batter, Marisnik. Great athlete right here. I, I've been knowing this guy since he was eight years old. Really? Yeah. In California, his mom is actually my marketing lady for for over 12 years. Is that right? Yes, I've been knowing him for a long time. He's a great athlete, great kid. Uh, he hit ninth, and he has 10 home runs. Yes, you know he can be a threat as well. He's very fast, great athlete. Check swing. One and one. Amazing man, I've, I've known a lot of guys that's coming up and guys that are in the big leagues. Had a chance to talk to them and have great conversations with them and see them grow as a man, as a player. One and one with the tying run at second and two down. Beaten foul. Oh, we Told the story a little bit Friday and again last night. Your relationship with George Springer. He used to be a little kid playing catch with you in the outfield in New Britain. Yep. And seeing Springer, you know, grow into the player he is today is it's pretty awesome, man. You it make just, it sound like your father time. You got a birthday coming up on Tuesday. Yeah. And I'm 32. I'll be 32. No, you're older than that. I'll be 32. One and two to Marisnik. Plus 10. Kepler's throw to the plate, not in time. He should have. The seven, eight, and nine batters all deliver two out singles to tie the game. But look at the pitch. The pitch looked like it was down and in. Marisnik. Well, the plan is to get the pitch up, but that pitch was a great pitch, and he was able to shoot that ball the other way. 
keep that head down and and shoot it the other way. I think if it's a, a sinker ball pitch, if you have the approach to hitting the ball the opposite field, you hit the ball better. And now on that throw right there from Kepler, I think he should have hit the cutoff man or either thrown it to third because Aoki didn't make the decision to go to third and, until he had the ball. He could have really thrown out Aoki at third. State Farm combination, the Twins in the middle of the pack with runners in scoring position. And look how much higher the Astros are, hitting a 296. Three times last night they left the bases full. Now runners on the corners two down for Springer who hit a fly ball to Rosario his first time up. And Gibson starts him with a slider and gets a swing and a miss. Yeah, he was he was trying to go get a three run uh, homer right there. He is swinging hard. One strike to Springer four singles against Gibson the first time through the order. Off the plate and the runner at first Marisnik bluffed towards second base. He's a pretty fast runner. He, can, he has some speed and he loves he loves to run so keep an eye on him. Springer gets some time as he steps out of the box. Last night's game, the exception, what the Twins have run into against this Houston team is a team that just swells with momentum within an inning. Things mushroom quickly, get out of control. Close. They scored in two different innings last night, a single run. But there have been so many situations in the season series like this where you think you're just about out of the inning and then ping, 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 boom, boom, ping, ping, and suddenly five runs are up there. <laughs> I like the ping, ping. It sounds like aluminum bats. <laughs> you mean bong, bong. Very close play at first. They're aggressive at the plate, they're aggressive on the bases. Very close play right there. He wants to steal. I mean, he's letting you know that's two times that he's been a close play at first. He has a great lead over there as well. On the ground, and Escobar looks at second and throws to first. Three singles, the tying run for the Astros in the second. We've got a special guest coming up in the third, and you're watching Twins Baseball presented by State Farm. Fires has turned his season around and perhaps his career by shelving a pitch that he used quite frequently, and that is the cut fastball. And one of the fiercest critics of the cut fastball is our studio host for the pre and post game show this weekend, Tim Laudner. 
And I'm just going to sit on the sidelines and ask Tim Laudner and Tori Hunter to debate the cut fastball. It's merits, <laughs> it's detriments, it's credits, it's debits, all of that. <laughs> well, Timmy, you've never liked the cut fastball, right? I mean, you think it what takes something off a of pitcher's regular fastball? Mariano Rivera. I mean, because of that era, I think he was the best player, best closer in Major League Baseball. And this cutter, everybody knew it in, in the country. So everybody grew up like, hey, I want to be, I want to have a cutter just like Mariano. He's my favorite player. And everybody tried to teach the cutter, but everybody can't throw a cutter. You know, every once in a while you get a player that can come up and throw a cutter like Corey Kluber. Uh, um, um, uh, Paul Burr made a career out of his cutter. You know, he played over 10 years because of his cutter. So you get some guys, but I think a lot of guys, when they throw that cutter, they actually, it becomes a bad slider. And us as hitters, we love it when you hang it. First home run, a no doubter to right, and the Twins get another home run against Fires on something that was not a cut fastball. He should have thrown a cutter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Adrianza, man, great glove. Come off a disabled list, list in uh, early May. Was it May when he came back? His fourth big league home run, but his first in the Twins uniform. Wow, he got that fastball right down the middle. If he's thrown a cutter, it would have jammed him. But he scrapped it. I don't know, I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, you know what? All right, well, when you want me to reveal it, I knew what was coming. 80% of the pitchers tipped their pitches, so I already knew what was coming. I just took the fastball and waited for you to hang the, the breaking pitch. So everybody in the league said, Tori only can hit that off speed, and then you throw me 99, and I turn on that stuff. Huh? Because I knew what was coming. Now I'm telling you my secrets. Stop tipping your pitches, and, and you, you know what? I, I wouldn't play them 40 and turn it on your 99. I was cheating. <laughs> One and two to Brian Dozier. And a strikeout for out number two. Six strikeout already and ten at bats for Mike Fires. Hey, uh, Tim, you see that it was 91 miles an hour, but he does have a sneaky fastball. And I, I agree with you. I think his straight, his fastball, if it's 88 to 90, 91, it plays harder. Sometimes I think he leaves it flat down the middle and tries to throw a strike with it, and it, it doesn't have that spin rate like he should. Grossman lines a single to right, and that'll get Sano to the plate with two men out. Tim, thanks for jumping in and chiming in on your uh, thoughts about the cut fastball, and we'll just hope that Fires, from time to time here during his stint, keeps leaving uh, regular fastballs up and out over the middle of the plate. Hey, Tim. 
<laughs> hey, Tim, you enjoy your, your Sunday, man. I know you out there in your Speedos laying out getting the tan, trying to get as dark as me. <laughs> All right, we'll hear from Tim in the postgame show with Sano at the plate, a man at first and two down. Thanks for the visual, by the way. Right now I got to live with that for the next half hour of Tim Wagner working on his tan. In a speedo. Go. Oh, well, it's going to Abrupt it's subject be a night, change. The no. Nightmare. Called out on strikes his first time up. Big swing by Sano on an off speed pitch, and it's one and one. A little change up down and in right there. His changeup has it's been pretty good. They haven't been hitting that. They've been hitting this fastball. I can see him, you know, maybe the next couple of innings just really throwing a, a steady diet of changeups. One and one. You know what we've seen from Fires so far, pitcher. I don't know if this makes any sense or not, but he's he's working like front and back with his. Straight change in his fastball. We haven't seen a whole lot of you know, breaking stuff. I mean, he just seems to really be trying to keep the Twins hitters off balance, velocity-wise. The yo-yo system. Is that what you call that? Yes. There's a breaking ball and a big swing on this, and it's one and two. You know, like I said, they they like to establish the fastball early. And then they have, you know, in the fifth inning and fourth inning, I see a lot of guys really go to their curveball. Like John Lackey. Lackey used to throw his fastball, fastball, uh, cutter, but then didn't throw, throw his breaking pitch until the fifth inning to give you something different to look at. Because hitters do get comfortable and they start seeing you after the second time around. They get like, all right, I'm making adjustments, and you, you got to bring out another pitch. One and two to Sano. Followed back, that was the pitch he wanted. 90 miles per hour over the inner half of the plate, and he fouled it straight back. Actually, he was a little late on that. That was 90 miles an hour, and he was late. That's a sneaky fastball. It was kind of middle, and you see how late he was? That was actually on the inside corner of him. It was, it was a sneaky fastball that actually got on, in on him. It wasn't on the barrel. It was on on his hands. Runner goes and popped up wide of third. Breckman with room to end the inning. Jammed him right there. Twins get another solo home run. This one from their number nine batter, and they retake the lead two to one.
Visit BuyFordNow.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. By Grand Casino, the best stories start here. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. I used to love snow cones, and then I started getting fillings in my teeth. And that, that stopped being fun for me anymore. You like snow cones? I, I used to. I just don't like the noise. Wow. Bullet off the bat of Altuve and a quick first out here in the third. The noise. The, it's like, you know, the scraping of ice. Oh, that? It, okay. it really. I don't know. I might be a weird guy, but I don't like ice being picked. Okay. Well, one down. And Reddick will bat. Gibson stake to another one run lead. Astros tied it up with three straight, two out singles in the second. Up and away, ball one. You were talking with Tim Laudner about pitchers, uh, how you were able to cheat because you were someone who was able to steal uh, pitchers or, or look for tips as to which pitch was coming and cheat a little bit. Well, now, well, I remember when you came up, you know, you, everything was new to you, and, and, and you, that's not something you're taught to do in the minor leagues. Who got you going in that way? May, you know, it has to be somebody that's been around, and uh, one guy that set me down and taught me was Paul Molitor. You know, Paul Mahler had me in Cleveland one day, and I was Dave Berber was on the mound. But now he was then the, the bench, bench coach. coach. Okay, yeah, he was a right. bench coach then. I had him as a, a teammate, and I had him as a bench coach, and then I had him as a manager in 2015. But as a bench coach in 2001, he set me down, and um, um, and and I had the day off, and Dave Berber was on the mound. He he got my helmet and told me, turn it around, put your face in your helmet, and there's a hole on the top of your helmet. And I had to look at Dave Berber for three innings and figure out what he was doing to tip his pitches. And then after the you know the second inning, I actually saw it. You know he says high. Check He's, swing and strike three to Reddick. He was set high on the off on the fastball and he was set lower than the Indians uh, uh, logo on his right. chest. He was set lower than that on off speed. And I threw my helmet down. I was like Molly, Molly, I got it, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Well, I can tell you right now that over 80 percent, over 50 percent of the players in major leagues tip, whether they're good or bad. Is that right? Yes. And I was like, man. So I started studying for those things, and I would look for it in my first at bat. I would, I would sacrifice my first at bat to look for those things, whether the vein in his forearm is moving and shifting or different things like that. Did he hold the fastball before he got in the glove? And then he did, did he make a movement? So I saw the if I see your forearm flex, I know you change into another pitch. So it's little things that was taught to me by a veteran guy. And then that's why I did it. And I taught a lot of guys on every level that I went to, every team that I went to, and I tried to give it back to those guys. And they would say, hey, Tori's a good teammate, but I was good because I was giving them what was coming. <laughs> <laughs> tried to make every team better man we, we you got to take that advantage of the weak link you know if you got a weakness out there I think we should be hyenas and take advantage of it. So you did that with the Angels and the Tigers and brought it back to the Twins and it yeah. all started in the visiting dugout in Cleveland. Yes. Uh, looking through the vent hole in your helmet. I wish I must have been televising that game and I'm wondering whether we ever got any video of that in the dugout. Uh, that, that would have been a good video. It would have been great video. I hope somebody got it but I doubt it. <laughs> you know <laughs> the times then was totally different. You probably can't see it because the resolution was terrible. Two and two to Brian McCann. And a good inning for Kyle wow. Gibson. First pitch was lined for an out then he followed it up with two strikeouts and it's two to one twins as we go to the fourth.
are leading the game two to one and our Toyota gets getting caught up. Oh man Kenny Vargas got a fastball and demolishes it. It's it over 450 feet. Then you had Jake Marisa you know stayed inside a good sinker and uh, scoring Bregman right there and, uh, and then you got oh man Adrianza man it, first home run as a twin went deep. 413 feet on the Adrianza home run. Dwarfed by Vargas's home run an inning earlier. It'll be Kepler, Vargas, and Escobar facing fires. And there's an off speed pitch, that changeup for a called strike. Yeah, I definitely think he's going to go to the changeup. That fastball's been getting hit pretty hard, so I have to change up the, the sequence a little bit. That's chipped behind third, but it's going to be a foul ball and a nice catch by Brankman. Who was playing well off the line? He had to cover a lot of ground on a short fly ball, one down. Yeah, he's able to cover some ground right there. The third baseman with athletic ability. Change up down and away. Look how much ground he covered them short legs. Very short and compact. Those guys play hard, man. Pedroia, Altuve, and Bregman. These guys play hard. They're short guys, and they they feel like I have to do more than most. And they play that way 100% every every play every game. Vargas takes a curveball for a strike. I told you before the game. I think the two favorite players for me to watch, not Twins players, are Pedroia and El Tuve. Yep. Both second basemen. Both on the uh, shorter side of the size spectrum. Yeah, man. These think about it. It's, you know, their whole careers, they probably was told, that, hey, you, you know, you, you're too short, or you can't do this, you can't do that, and. You know what? They proving guys wrong. They're proving people wrong. And floats in at 72, and it's one and two. Vargas might not see it, at least from fires. He might not see another fastball. At least not one for a strike. Just sit on the changeup and try to hit that left field sh short porch over there. Fastball got him. Bayou Classic. Two down. Let's go to Kevin Gorg. All right, guys, it's time for our big story in baseball. It takes us to Miami last night, and what a big story this was. The rookie, Cody Bellinger, up in the seventh, needing the triple for the cycle. There it goes, right center. Stanton can't make the play. Off to the wall and off to the races goes Bellinger. It's the first ever rookie in Dodger history to hit for the cycle. He goes four for five, three ribbies. How hot are the Dodgers? Well, they've won eight straight. They've built a nine and a half game lead. And they're winning again today. But the cycle, the story last night, guys, hard to do. They are doing in the National League what the Astros are doing in the American League. Quite a story. That's One to and now to Escobar. That's hard to do, hit for the cycle. Did you ever do that? Man, every time I had a chance, I hit a double or a home run, another double. I have a single, a double, a triple. And then before you know it, I hit a home run or I hit another double. I'm like, man, it's, I had it several chances, but it seemed like I doubled up on a home run or a double. One and one to Escobar. Get a soft line drive to the shortstop Gonzalez his first time up and they'll foul away. You know you step back and look at it and it's fun to watch a uh, hitter get hit for the cycle. But it's it's just kind of a novelty. You know it's a four hit game at least a four yeah. hit game. So those are fun to watch anyway. Yeah. But it's, it's tough to do all four like how is that possible you got a single a double a triple you have to be lucky. To do that, it's just like that ball right there that, that was hit by Bellinger, and then John Carlos Stan, Stanton runs out. Right. He lost it in the lights. Yeah, you have to have a little luck. Yeah, there's yeah. no way you. How's that possible that he got a triple by losing a ball in the lights? Unbelievable. Thank you. Take him to the casino. One and two to Eduardo Escobar. Foul back. Twins manager Paul Molitor hit for the cycle and I told the story before he had a chance and I think in his final year with the Twins down in Texas in a, in a 10 to 3 game he had a chance to hit for the cycle again and the Texas manager intentionally walked him oh, to bad. avoid giving up the cycle. I, I never understood that why you know what, what's the harm in that in a blowout game ask him on strikes out. And Fires has two strikeouts in every inning so far. This being the fourth inning, that means he's got eight. You're watching Twins Baseball presented by State Farm.
MLB.com at bat mobile app. Stay connected to the game's best players all season long with game day, live game, video highlights, radio broadcasts, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today, your number one app for live baseball. Kevin Gork, Tory Hunter, Dick Bramer here, the Twins leading 2 to 1, trying to win the series 2 to 1. Guriel will lead things off against Gibson in the Houston Ford. As we speak right now on July 16th, there are 11 teams in the major leagues with a winning record. Six in the American League, five in the National League, and the Minnesota Twins are one of them. Needed to win last night to stay above 500. There's strike called one and one. Gibson is really doing a great job of keeping the ball down and actually mixing up his pitches and keeping these guys off balance a little bit. To left center. And an opening double for Guriel here in the fourth inning. I spoke too soon. Pitch was down. He actually not a terrible pitch. He kept the ball down, and Yuli actually just hit the ball pretty hard. That was a good pitch. This guy really knows what his where his bat head is. That sound is beautiful. Well, the Twins leading by a run, and now Gibson will try to pitch around the leadoff double to keep the lead. He struck out Marwin Gonzalez swinging his first time up. Five hits for the Astros, four singles, and now the leadoff double in the fourth. Even with the runner at second, the Twins have the pull shift on for Gonzalez. The shortstop, Andreanza, in charge of keeping Guriel as close to second as he can. This guy's hitting close to 400 runners in scoring position, so he knows how to step up and get the job done. And you have to do that because, I mean, if Guriel takes off for third base. Escobar has to make that hole on the left side of the infield even bigger to cover the third base bag. That's right. But Yuli is not running at all. One and oh. He's already in scoring position. There's no need for him to even think about it at all. They're outside two and oh. There are no soft spots in this Houston lineup. Not at all. And you, know, you got Gonzalez right here. Like I said earlier, a lot of guys back in the day, you have guys at second base, no outs, fourth in, and they might bunt him over or try to waste them bat, trying to roll the ball over to the right side to get him over. Now, three guys are going to try to hit him in. So, strike taken. I really like that, that approach. Gonzalez is 0 for 9 with two strikeouts against Gibson, and then behind him, Alex Bregman hits. Bregman started the second in, or yeah, second inning rally with a two-out single. 50 pitches on the day for Gibson. Thirty-three strikes, which is good. Inside. He's now three and one. He's been very careful right here. Has a, a righty on deck. And the base open right there. You have a le lefty facing him. Really don't, don't have to give him anything to hit. And hopefully Breckman hits a ground ball because he's very tough on righties with getting ground balls and double plays. Foul and it's three and two. Change up right there. Were you aware when some pitcher had your number, like an 0 for 9, 
because I'm sure Gibson's aware of the fact that he's been able to get Gonzalez out every time. 0 for 9 against Gibson as a hitter. Are you aware of something like that? Yeah, it depends. Like I could be 0 for 9 against the guy, but I got nine bullets hit off of him, and I, I feel comfortable off him. But the numbers say I'm 0 for 9. The numbers don't tell the whole story, you know. And and so I don't know how Gonzalez hit the ball off off of Gibson. He's just unlucky, or is he just really getting dominated? And Gibson ends up walking in first and second. Nobody out. You know, Gibson will try to do what Irvin Santana did such a good job of. Last night, and that is limit the damage. In fact, escaping the damage altogether, yeah. leaving the bases loaded twice while he was out there. Bregman, the batter, he singled in front of Grossman in left field with two outs, and we didn't think so much of it. But then a couple of other singles tied the game at one. Gibson, with 16 prior starts, has 12 ground ball double plays. He'll try to get. Bregman to beat it into the ground here. Breaking ball strike one. Is that a call? You're calling the ground ball double play right here? Well, it'd be foolish, I suppose, to call a triple play, but the Twins pulled off one of those two in a situation like this. That's right. Was it in Boston? Yep. I remember that. It was in Anaheim, actually. Was it Anaheim? Mm -hmm. Was there one in Boston in late 90s? There were two of them in one game. Yeah. Twins turned two of them in, in one game. That's right. I remember that. One and one. The latest one was in Anaheim. Yep. Ooh. Foul tip, and that stunned Jimenez. It's one and two. Two seamer. He had it up. He really wanted to go after that pitch because the pitch was up, and that's their plan of attack. But that ball barreled in on him, and foul tip off of Jimenez. Bregman has grounded into a double play 11 times. He's really looking for that ground ball right here and Bregman is going to shorten his swing up and calm it down and he can really get a ground ball right here because of that. But the plan is still to get the ball up. And he has to protect the plate so anything close he's going to swing. A little bit low. Two and two. Pretty good take for Bregman there. That pitch was down out of the strike zone. Yeah, that would have been a great, great pitch for uh, Cal Gibson for the ground ball that he needs. And Bregman gets down the line pretty well, so you have to be pretty quick turning this double play. Took him out. Nice, big strikeout right there. The soft mid of Jimenez gathers in the foul tip, one down, and that'll bring up Aoki. This is a guy you have to be careful with as well because left hander and he's looking for a pitch up. Now there's a this change up. It was a change up down. Change up down and uh, couldn't really do anything with it. You swing at those pitches down on Gibson. You're either going to hit the ground ball or you're going to swing over the top of it. Aoki got a pitch letter high and lined it into center field for a base hit. Gibson got ahead of him. On the outside corner. Gibson doing a good job of throwing strike one. Yeah, 11 of 17 first pitch strikes. And a fastball, strike two. From Paul Molitor before the game today said, "Well, Gibson, you know, likes to use all his pitches and all that, but you know, the the number one thing he had to do here today to pitch well against this Astro lineup, and he's done a good job of it so far, is throw strike one and then use all your other pitches. Yeah, get ahead first and then 
manipulate those pitches. Sometimes you manipulate them too early, they they're out of the zone. Check swing, no swing, says John Tompain. That's one and two. Ioki's going to be hard to double off because he can chop balls with the best of them. He hit the ball and it goes high. He hit it in the ground, and it's a, and that that dirt that they have out here in, in the dome is actually pretty packed down and hard, so probably benefits him a lot. Hit into 10 ground ball double plays. He doesn't strike out very often, just 25 times and nearly 200 at bats. Chased by Rosario, and he can't get there. Guriel will score. Gonzalez coming around third, and a little hesitation from Adrianza. It's a two run double, and the Astros take the lead. Seen the Shifted outfield works so well for the Twins, and that time Rosario playing in left center, the ball was hit in right center. Yeah, it's tough, man, because if, if a guy throws a lot of off-speed, the left is usually going to pull it. But he left that pitch up out over the plate, and he was able to put good wood on it. He doesn't hit balls that far usually, but uh, he left the pitch up, and he was able to drive it. Now the Astros lead by a run. Runner at second, still only one out, and Marisnik. And the Astros show the depth of their lineup, getting a lot of production from the bottom third here in the early innings today. Check to swing ball one. I think if Rosario would have hit the first cutoff, man, they probably would have had a, a better chance. But the ball had to sail past Dozier and get to Hedronza. Any double clutch. So Tom Kelly, he said, hey, if it's low, it's fine. But if it's high, you're actually giving the, the runner an extra two or three steps. Big swing and a miss, one and one. Have to hit that cutoff man. Six hits for the Astros. And Aoki has two big ones, including the two run double to put the Astros in front. Saw what Marisnik did earlier with the two seamer in. I'm pretty sure he's trying to stick with that same approach of right center. Outside a ball. And last night Santana limited the Astros to two innings where they scored a single run. Oh, a multi run inning inside and it's three and one. Change up inside. Springer on deck. Rizzing must hit the ball anywhere, everywhere because everybody's straight up the infield and the outfield. On the outside corner. Really good pitch. There's Marisnik spray chart. 18%, you know, 23% to center, and 17. He's more, he's balanced. Hitting the ball more to center field, which is shows that he has a quick bat. And a breaking ball got him. Yeah. Really good pitch. Fox Sports North and Positive Coaching Alliance will honor five double goal coaches when the Twins take on the Yankees July 18th at Target Field. Double goal coaches embody the ideals of striving to win while teaching life lessons through sports. Chrissy Makalo, Mankato West girls soccer coach, will be recognized during the game. And to learn more about Positive Coaching Alliance, visit positivecoach.org. And now Springer. With a runner at second and two down. Strike over the inside corner. You know what sports does have a lot of life lessons. Mm -hmm. It does teach you some things. Teach you about failure. When you fail, you gotta make adjustments. If you don't make adjustments in life, what happens? Not much happens in your life. Where's the wisdom? 
from Hula Dula to Domino Rula. That's you. Yeah, that's me. Two strikes. Couple of doubles in the inning, a walk. The Astros are back in front by a run. Down and in. You don't want him to get extended. You probably have to stay tight on him. Stay inside with the two seamer. Not try to hang that off speed. He can really do some damage if you get it up. Check this way. Two and two. Gibbs is not the type of pitcher that really goes after you. He actually nibbles a lot and try to make his balls move and manip manipulate pitches, the slider, the change up, the, the two seamer. And it actually makes his pitch count go skyrockets. I like to see him go deeper in games. And now he nibbles his way into a full count. Gibson wanted to get Jimenez's attention. Just in the fourth inning here. We can get six innings out of Gibson today. It's a, be a quality start. Without, you know, without the runs, of course. But. Well, if he gives up just three runs, he can complete six innings. Obviously the Twins would take it at this point since they've already got three runs up on the board. Three and two to Springer. A base is open, but Altuve's on deck. Oh. Missed the outside corner. Gibson thought he hit it. That's a good pitch. I mean, that's a great pitcher's pitch. It's either the umpire's going to give it to you or not. Did he hit the corner or did he not? It's a good pitcher's pitch. I don't know if he hit the corner, but it's a good pitcher's pitch. It was outside. Outside. Back in the day, you're out. And Neil Allen's going to come to the mound. The Twins activating the bullpen. This is one of those innings that's kind of mushroomed. We've seen the Astros do it. We've seen it happen to Gibson in the past. Lead off double, then a follow up walk, a one out double, and now a two out walk. And El Tuve comes up with the Astros already up a run. And he's probably, Neil Allen's probably telling him to be careful with this guy. Keep the ball down, maybe try to get a creative ground ball right here. And against the Twins, he's a hidden machine. He's a hitter anyway, but you got to be careful. Look at the multi hit games. He has <laughs> 320 multi hit games since 2012. 205 0 hit 0 for, 0 for games. That's unbelievable. He's seen two pitches from Gibson today. Grounded the first pitch he saw in the first inning up the middle for a single. Then leading off the third, he hit the first pitch on a line to Escobar, and Gibson misses inside ball one. Buddy Boshear's getting loose in the Twins bullpen. He pitched pretty pretty well in the first game coming out of the bullpen. Missing inside again, 2-0. Oh. Don't want him to get extended. He's coming in. That was 91 the first pitch, 92 with some sink and run. He's really trying to stay tight on Altuve. We saw what happened uh, yesterday when he got extended. He did it 385 feet to the opposite field. To the opposite field, right? And there's a strike. And 
Gibson is pretty tough from righty, so you have to go after him. You don't want Reddick. He's a lefty hitting a sinker ball guy. You don't want that. You almost got to go after Altuve right here. Three and one. That's a good pitch. A little low, but good pitch. Reddick on deck. Gibson hadn't walked a batter coming into this inning. And now has already walked two here in the fourth. And they've seen this before from Gibson, seemingly in control, and then one thing leads to another, and suddenly there's a big number put up there, and Gibson might need to get Altuve to stay in the game with the left hand hitting Reddick on deck. That's a good pitch. Strike on the outside corner. It's almost the same pitch as uh, the one previous pitch. The one that walked Springer. Uh, that, look, that looked more like a ball, this pitch right here, than the one, the previous pitch before this one. Full count, runners will go with two down. Stay tight. With a nice fielding play and the throw to first. Calm down, folks. We got a guy there. Two runs for the Astros on a pair of doubles and a pair of walks, and it's 3 2 Houston. Mountain Dew fans of the game. There's a old uh, Colt a guy with the Twins jersey. He's got a 45s hat. That's what this franchise used to be called here before uh, the space uh, age began. The Houston Colt 45s. And then they became the Astros when they moved into the Astrodome. Malt liquor? Or the, the, the gun. gun? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's. You know, that was a big firearm in the in the days of the old West. Colt 45. There's a high fly to right center field. Heading back is Reddick. And on the edge of the track makes the catch one away. No, and it'll bring up Chris Jimenez. You no, know, usually when you have a, a pitcher out there, Cal Gibson was out there almost 15, 20 minutes. He's a Colt 45. There's a, a malt liquor called Colt 45. Okay, I know that. All right, yeah. I just wondering. So that's not it, huh? That's not it. Joe Morgan, Hall of Fame second baseman, was a Houston Colt 45 before he went to Cincinnati. Jimmy Wynn, the toy cannon, was a Houston Colt 45. 
seems like a strong name. I'm wondering whether I mean you know nothing wrong with the name but you wonder whether they ever consider a nickname change here now. I mean we're kind of past they're out of the Astrodome right. So you should think they should have a name. Could you can name a team nine millimeter. <laughs> Just saying, you know. I'm glad they changed the name. Two strikes to Jimenez. Up and away. Fires has given up just three hits, the two home runs, one by Vargas, one by Adrianza, and then Grossman single. I was saying earlier that Cal Gibson was on the mound 15, 20 minutes. He's out there, and so you kind of the leadoff guy has to come up and kind of work the count or walk up really slow. They will walk up really slow and try to give your guy a breather because of the long inning. And you know, with Rosario swinging at the second pitch. That's pretty tough. That's just because he's young in the game. He doesn't know, understand the, how to give the guys a rest like that. But I was taught that by a veteran guy. Second at bat in a row where Jimenez swings at a breaking ball down away. Nine strikeouts for Fighters already in the ball game. Man, this guy, you know, he's been mixing the pitches up pretty well. A sneaky fastball has been getting a lot of guys. He's throwing that change up. And so, you, you know, you're kind of in between as a hitter trying to figure out if he's going to throw the off speed, but then he throws that 90 mile an hour fastball by you classic. And, uh, and man, this guy has a lot of strikeout. He's raking them. And that's the last strikeout. He's using his curveball. These guys hadn't seen his curveball much. He's starting to bring it out. Rianza bounces it up the line. Foul. Fire struck out nine Texas Rangers in early May. It's the only other time he's reached this many strikeouts. I think what uh, granted the Twins have the two home runs that have been pulled and Grossman's single has been pulled, but I know typically what Paul Molitor laments is when you got a guy with who features an off-speed pitch, as we've seen, there's nothing about his fastball that should overwhelm you, right? To take an opposite field approach, and the Twins hitters have not done a very good job of that. I mean, uh, it's different. You know, TK would sit you down if you didn't go the opposite way. That's a strike. Made a, all of us a better better hitters. Even when we went on and dispersed to other organizations, we most of his guys last. You know, and have to have that that opposite field built in you. Two strikes to Adrianza. So far, there have been a couple of weak little pop flies to the opposite field from all the Twins hitters. This is the 18th plate appearance. I would like to see more of that. Guys going to the left center, right center, just being complete hitters instead of one dimensional. Up and away. And it sounds so simple. And I think that's what's something that uh, James Rawson is uh, trying to implement. He's trying to change the mentality, you know, of the hitters, which has probably been in him for a while now. You know, um, you know, you got guys like Josh Willingham. He came over. He's a more of a poor hitter, but he has some success. Andre Anzo will reach. I'm not sure that the ball ever got. To Gonzalez, the third baseman, Bregman cut in front of him. It'll be an infield hit and right up the middle, but uh, at least not pulled. And Adrian to the board with two down. And here's a uh, fastball away. He just hit it on the ground and hit it in the right spot. You know, both those guys are reaching for it. And Bregman might have got him in his vision a little bit, Gonzalez's vision, and he got a base hit. Dozier has struck out twice against Fires, both times swinging. Look at the hole at second base. This is what I was telling you before. We see this, teams will do it. The first baseman's holding Adrianza, and the second baseman, Altuve, is 25 feet from the second base bag. So there's like 120 feet of open infield there. Look at this hole. There's no way I'm not shooting for this. Really? Busted bat, pulling it foul. Even that pitch, I would have tried to shoot the other way. 
just a high chopper would get through and go through the infield. There's no way I would pull that. I would jam my bat and break my bat to hit that ball over there. One strike to Dozier. But that's just me. You know, everybody's different. Everybody. Everybody in this world is different. So I just see a weakness and I'm taking advantage of it. Oh, got him. Him off of first. Seemed like he slipped before he got went back to the bag. His foot slipped out. Dozier will lead off the six. Right now the twins are trailing. Three to two. Bring your circle me signs, and if you get circled, you might find yourself in the Minnesota Lottery winner circle. Or you could win $100 worth of scratch off lottery tickets courtesy of the Minnesota Lottery. Twins return home after the game today, open up a homestand against the Yankees tomorrow night. And Burt Blylevin will be back in the broadcast booth to circle you tomorrow if you are a lucky fan. Josh Reddick leading off the bottom of the fifth, and a breaking ball over. Strike one. Like to see Gibson get one, two, three, and get out of this inning pretty quick, so we can get out another six innings out of him. Check swing one and one. Twins open up the homestand tomorrow night against the Yankees, who are this afternoon, as we speak, threatening to win back-to-back -back games for the first time in more than a month. They have hit the skids. They're leading Boston three to nothing in what is the first of a split doubleheader. They'll play another game tonight. About the time the Twins will land from Houston, the Yankees will get ready to play their second game against the Red Sox at Fenway Park, and then they'll fly to Minnesota after playing what 16 innings yesterday. Twins might very well set up a post office box if you want to send sympathy cards to the Yankees. I don't think. <laughs> Any no. Twins fan will do that, but no chance. One and two to Reddick. The evil empire. And Gibson with another strikeout. It's nice. That's nice. I like the way this the speed is going in his inning. One down. Here's a look at the fastballs. He was a little late on it. He might have been looking for something all speed. I said Gibson misses, mixes his pitches pretty well. He's sitting back waiting on that pitch. Bayou Classic fastball. I hadn't heard that before. The Bayou Classic. It's yeah, that, Bayou, right? Yeah, it's me. It's Bayou. It went Bayou. Okay. So we could use it Bayou Classic football game, whatever. 
One strike to McCann with one down in the fifth. McCann with a bouncer to second and a swinging strikeout. Just wanted to bring you some dugout humor, right? And Dozier will flip to Gibson with Vargas cutting in front of the second baseman. Two down. And that'll bring up Yuli Gurriel. Think he can beat the Twins mascot TC in a home run contest? Register at GoMN.com now through August 31st for your chance to win four tickets to a Saturday home game, a Twins jersey, and a spot in the pregame home run contest courtesy of Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Minnesota Twins. Two down in the fifth, and now Guriel. Has TC ever been beaten? Yeah. Now, you asked me yesterday and I, whether I'd ever hit a home run, and I said yes in the fantasy camp. And I have taken the bear down twice in the home run hitting contest. Bouncer to short. And over to first, a really good inning for Kyle Gibson. It happens about once or twice a year. It's hard to take a bear down. <laughs> Three to two. Target Field's a great place to spend time with the people who are important to you family, friends. Groups of 25 or more are eligible for discounts on tickets and per ticket fees are eliminated. eliminated. You can arrange your group of 25 plus today by visiting twinsbaseball.com slash groups or call 833 Twins and ask about a Twins Target Field group outing. Brian Dozier was at the plate when Adrianza was picked off. Now he'll lead off the sixth against Mike Fires. On the ground, two hops, scooped up by Gonzalez. Three infielders on that side of the infield. It's kind of hard to hit a ground ball through on that side. One down. I love to see him hit that hole over there. That would have been nice. Robbie Grossman will bat. Grossman with a single pulled through the right side of the infield. So again, there's been just a couple of weak little pop ups hit to the opposite field. Grossman squares with only one infielder on the left side of the infield and takes a strike. It's just it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing to me to see this every time shift like that. Three guys on one side of the field and one guy over there and we can't hit it over there. Now the Astros do it more than anybody else. That's that's one of the reasons they're good. But why wouldn't they do it if a hitter is just going to continue to try to pull the ball anyway? I mean, well, why wouldn't you put Three, four guys over there. If if the hitter is going to continue to pull the ball, if the, pit, if the pitcher makes his pitch, the, the slaughter in or two seamer away. I mean, if he does a great job of making his pitch, he can make that happen. If you're not going to try to go the other way, if you, and you know, 18 percent of his his balls are going to second base. And those are ground balls, and but in the outfield, he sprays it, you know, pretty well. 
Missing inside, close pitch, two and two. But it's just amazing to me that you can't go the other way. I'm not saying I was great at it. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's no way you can play a shift on me like that. There's a changeup, and it throws Grossman two down. Now ten strikeouts for Mike Fires. That was a pretty good pitch. Look at this breaker. Stayed up. It was down the middle. That's a gift from God. That's what Kirby Puckett used to say. He said, don't miss your blessing. Two down and now Sano, who has been called out on strikes. And he pulled a little foul pop caught by Bregman to end the third inning. I don't know if you noticed since the fifth inning, the beginning of the fifth inning, he's brought out his curveball. And what I was talking about earlier is that pitchers. You know, establish a pitch, show these guys, and give them a different look after the fifth inning. And he's been bringing that curveball out, and that's why it's so difficult for those guys to swing at it because they hadn't seen it yet. Fastball off the plate after a changeup was called a strike. He's starting to settle in, and you tell he's getting a little more rhythm. And he's mixing these pitches up really, really well. That hits the corner. One and two. Well, that's what you'd like to see from a pitcher. Right? Get better the second and third time through the lineup. One and two to Miguel Sano. Because he brings out another pitch about a third time. It's difficult. It's a good curveball. Fastballs, at least the one Sano is getting there. Either on the outside corner or off the plate. Yeah, he wants them to kind of reach out and kind of lose your power when you reach out. You kind of lose your power when it's tight in on you. And when he throws in, sometimes he likes to come up and in. Breaking ball, got him. There it is, the curveball once again. He's bringing it out. Guys haven't seen it yet. Fires enjoys a one, two, three, sixth inning with a couple of strikeouts. And I had a conversation this morning, guys, about the game plan for Kyle Gibson. He said he scouted this team here the last two nights and said he's never seen a team that battles every single at bat like the Astros. He said you have to get ahead. You cannot nibble. You cannot walk players. There are too many dangerous spots in this lineup. He said if Kyle Gibson can move them, attack the plate, get him off a little bit, and use his good stuff down, he'll have success. And we've seen that through most of this game. The one inning where he got to nibbling, as Torrey pointed out, was last inning, and it was a long one, guys. Now that was actually the fourth inning. He had a very quick nine pitch fifth inning. But the Astros 
entered the fourth inning down two to one got a couple of runs with a couple of doubles and a couple of walks. One and oh now to Marwin Gonzalez he drew the walk after Guriel's double and both Houston players came around to score on Aoki's double. Right back to Very nice. Very nice. One down. Here's Gibson's day so far, and you have to say he's pitched rather well against his really good lineup. Oh yeah, he's uh he's been mixing up those pitches well, keeping the ball down and actually, you know, pitching in tough. The slider has been you know breaking under the left left hander's bat and change up's been working. He's in and out, mixing them up. Hard soft, in out. I like it. Fifth inning, Kevin Gore went to sleep. <laughs> well, just a quick nap because it was only nine pitches long. Up and in to Brakeman. Singleton scored in the second. His single came with two outs in the inning. And it was a ball that landed out in the vicinity of Grossman, who played it safely for a single, but then two other singles followed. And the Astros tied it up off the plate 2 0. Oh. I Me, mean, Gibson, to really go after these guys right now. And uh, so we can last. He probably can go back out in the seventh inning. If he gets through this inning pretty quick, he can go out there in the seventh inning and start of it. Uh, Three and O. Oh, Aoki on deck. Trevor Hildenberger warming up. I think he's for Marisnik. Down the middle. Gibson's pitched awfully well here, but he's had his most difficulty with the bottom hitters in the Houston lineup, which speaks to how good those hitters are and how productive they've been all year long. We call those guys bottom feeders. And he walked. Bregman. Third walk issued by Gibson. And that'll bring up Aoki. Aoki has been the one that's been giving them the most havoc. Ioki has a really good plan. He's a veteran guy. He's been around. He understands the game. He understands his ability. And he knows that he has to get this pitch up off of uh, Gibson to have success today. And he's done that. Watching Eddie Rosario in center field in the fourth inning at bat. Rosario was playing in left center field. Now he's playing in right center where the double went. That's probably because now he knows that Gibson is throwing a lot of off speed to this guy. And they're going to continue to do it. And that's why he's probably shifted over. Gibson throws a fastball to two senior middle away. I, I can see Ioki shooting that ball to the left center, left field. He was trying to, Gibson was trying to get Aoki to hit the ball on the ground for a double play, but instead he had a double. There's a double play grounder. Dozier, low flip. Nice play nice by play. Anza to take a low flip. And turn the pivot to get the double play, and Gibson faces just three men on the six. He will start the seventh seventh inning.
Sports North is presented by Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in the Twin Cities. And by State Farm, here to help life go right with the home and auto protection you deserve. Start of the game, if you'd have said uh, well, Kyle Gibson's going to give the Twins a quality start against this lineup, the Twins would have taken that. That's what Gibson's done. Might be asked to go out there and get some outs, if not all three of them in the seventh inning. Meanwhile, the most disappointing thing for the Twins is they haven't been able to do much of anything with Mike Fires. They have two runs, two solo home runs against Fires. Kepler at the plate to start the seventh, and he pops it to the left side of the infield. And that brings to mind that there have been two balls put in play to the opposite field through six innings against Fires. One was Kepler's foul pop caught by Bregman after a long run leading off the fourth and the other one was Escobar's pump back liner to the shortstop Gonzalez with one out in the second inning. And I think what has happened here is the Twins hitters have found themselves eating out of Fire's hand because he's given the Twins pitches uh, off the plate and outside and the Twins I think have gotten trapped into a, a pattern of trying to Pull pitches that are hard to be pulled. Now here's a pop up, and the left fielder Aoki comes in to make the catch one away. Hey, that was a cutter, by the way. That was an 87 mile an hour cutter. Just letting you guys know that. One down in the seventh. You can join us Thursday, July 20th for the 1987 summer celebration at Target Field. You can enjoy an evening on the field with members of the 1987 Twins. Including Burt Blydevin, Tim Laudner, Gary Gaetti will be there, Dan Gladden, Roy Smalley. The evening will feature interactive games, silent auction, program dinner, and more. To learn more and get your tickets today, visit twinsbaseball.com slash summer celebration. I'll be emceeing that event. And I checked the forecast this morning. It should be a beautiful night uh, on the field at Target Field. Here's Kenny Vargas. Let, let me show you this right quick. This is a cutter right here. You think it's a fastball and it cuts, and he came around it. An off speed pitch, swing and a miss, one and one. In off the plate. A little curveball right there. He knows that Vargas hadn't seen one yet, but he usually, usually with two strikes, he tries to finish guys because they hadn't seen it. But I, I doubt if he gets a fastball. It's got to be off speed. Fastball tight. Slow breaking ball. Left up a little bit. And it is three and one. All you would have seen is smoke coming out of my shoes. I wouldn't be in my, my shoes. All you would saw was smoke, me running around the bases. Escobar on deck. Dribble to the left side. Change up. And Vargas is retired on a 3 1 changeup. That was the third baseman, Bregman, the only infielder on that side of the infield making the play. Since the pickoff of Adrianza, Fires has retired five in a row. The Twins haven't hit anything hard against him in a long while. Fox yeah. tracks presented by Carrier. Yeah, Vargas hit a fastball out of the park, and Fires actually has been making adjustments on him and throwing a lot of all speed. Now it's time for Vargas to make the adjustment on him again. See what Escobar can do here with two gone in the seventh. Got a fastball, tried to tie the game. Sneaky fastball, pretty tough. Sometimes it runs in on you, sometimes it runs away. Mighty Mouse, let's go. I like Escobar, man. I like him. I like him as a player, as a person. Good in the clubhouse. Love to see when he he does well. well fastball driven foul down the left field line and it's 0 and 2. Astros have a lot of good components to their winning record and Chris Davinsky a big part of it. He's getting loose in the bullpen now. Fires has given the Astros 20 outs and has given up just four hits. And 
Another fastball. Three straight fastballs to Escobar. It's 0 and 2. Did you see the last pitch? His wind up. He paused right there. Trying to mess up the rhythm of the, the hitter. And all Escobar could do is try to foul it off because he was messed up. He paused on that, that last wind up. Breaking ball beaten into the ground. Gonzalez, the shortstop, makes the play, and the Twins go down one, two, three again in the seventh, trailing by a run. And we are happy on this Sunday afternoon to be able to bring you God Bless America. It's our Sunday afternoon tradition here at Minute Maid Park. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we kindly ask that you please rise and join us as we take pause not only to honor our great nation, but to salute and thank those who defend our freedom around the world each and every day. Please join Miss Ashley Phelps for the singing of God Bless America. God bless America. Land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. to the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. Astros up a run. We got Kenny Vargas with the fastball right down the middle. Crushes it 450 plus feet. Then Jake Mariznick standing side of two seamer in. Scoring Bregman. Tying the game up. And then you got Adrianza. His first home run as a twin. Hit that pretty hard. 413 feet. And then Aoki, man, getting pitches up and actually getting the ball over Rosario's head. And uh, Mr. the relay, relay man. And they. And then Cal Gibson, he's been mixing up the pitches pretty well, man, and he's doing a good job. He's into the seventh, seventh inning and just what they needed. And strike one on the bun attempt by Jake Marizic. Mike Fires throwing pitches in the seventh inning for the Astros. First time that's happened in a month. And he got through the seventh inning, one, two, three, and here's Gibson trying to match him. 
Kyle ran into trouble really in two innings, the second and the fourth. They got a run in the second, two in the fourth. To hold this lineup to three runs through six innings again prior to last night. The Astros had scored double digits in five of their prior seven games. So Gibson coming up with one of his better outings here. He's never lost to the Astros. But he's losing to them right now three to two. Mariznick, Springer, and Altuve. The count goes to two and one. Gibson looks really locked in. You know, the whole game he looks locked in and he's really giving the Twins a chance to win today. He just uh, hadn't been doing it with the bats, but he's doing his job. Two and two. Under pitches for Gibson. 59 strikes. He's issued three walks. Got about 15 more pitches in him. Missed up. If he issues a leadoff walk here in the seventh, he might have just one pitch left in him. It's true. Twins have a right hander and a left hander warming up. Springer on deck. Beaten foul. Hildenberger and Bo Shears are loose. Trevor Hildenberger is filthy. He has a hitter I would never want to face him. I'll just take see the walk. <laughs> <laughs> Another foul. Just keep going after him. Don't walk him. Make him earn his way on. Marisnik driving in a run with a single to the opposite field on a pitch that was down and in. There you go. It's amazing that his ball moves so much. All he has to do is throw strikes. You see Mariznik, the balls are strikes down the middle, but he has so much movement that they can't really hit it like they want to. They can't barrel the ball up. We see that at the end of games from Brandon, Brandon Kinsler, same thing. Ball looks like it's coming right down the middle, but there's just a little sink at the end of yeah. Kinsler's fastball. That's why he gets so many ground balls. And Gibson. If he trusts his ability and his his stuff, all he has to do is go out there and throw strikes and make that ball manipulate. And he's throwing one sinker after another, and Marisnik is beaten it right into the ground. That's four four strikes right there, beat, beaten in the ground. Four right down two, the middle. Four two strike fouls. Some trying to get the first out of the seventh inning here. Do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Throw a strike. And foul back. Leaving a fastball up. It's a great at bat by Jake Marisner. Wow. Wow. Look at that. He just early on he was trying to get him to chase. I don't know why but right now he's throwing strikes and he still can't hit the ball well. Can't put good wood on it. He's fouling it all, fouling off. Good at bat by Jake Marisnik, but I like that Gibson is throwing strikes. And ah. a breaking ball. He took it for ball four. So he went after him with the fastball. He hadn't been hitting it. Fourth walk. And here comes Paul Molitor. Gibson goes through the Houston lineup three times. And he can't win the ball game here today, but Trevor Hildenberger will try to keep this game within reach. And a shake of the head for Gibson. That's just a great plate appearance by Marisnik fouling off all those fastballs and then taking a breaking ball and coaxing a leadoff walk here in the seventh.
by Ron. Let's uh, check out the T-Mobile Unlimited Baseball break. Daniel Murphy just keeps on hitting. Look at that. Since the start of the 2016 season, since he signed with wow. the Nationals, he's hitting 345. CC Sabathia giving the Yankees a big lift, holding the Red Sox to just two hits. And Araldis Chapman trying to save it in the ninth inning for the Yankees. And eight straight wins for the Dodgers. Gibson in the dugout with a good afternoon's work. It was a, a good outing for Kyle Gibson, even though he's trailing three to two. He did a great job, man. You know, he gave the Twins a chance uh, to today, and you know, there's nothing to hold, hang his head down low about. Just the second time that Gibson's exceeded 100 pitches, a season high 107. And now Trevor Hildenberger comes in to face the top of the Houston lineup, starting with George Springer. Step off to keep an eye on Marisnik as Tony Hunter gave you the scouting report. Marisnik, a good athlete, he can run well, and the Twins have had to keep an eye on him the two times he's been on base. Oh, he's definitely going. He's trying to get a good jump and get into scoring position. Even low, ball one. Hillenberger faced Springer here on Friday night, got him to bounce out to second. As Paul Molitor yesterday about Hildenberger and what his impression has been of him, he said, "Well, he's you know got good stuff. He's thrown strikes. He's seen poised out there. But the real test will be when hitters see him a second, third, and fourth time. And that's Springer's opportunity here. There goes the runner, and there'll be no throw. And I tell you, I know it. It's a really, really, really good jump." You know, most sidearm guys have a shoulder movement or something first, and, and you just key in. And look how fast he is. He's yeah. really good athlete. He's a first rounder for the Blue Jays. You could see Hildenberger, I think, giving his version of the slide step, but it's such an unorthodox delivery, it still takes a little while to deliver the ball to the plate. Yeah, most of the sidearm guys, that when they drop down, they actually have like a a movement down first or hands move first or the their knee or hip and that's what the, the base dealers are keying in on. They have a movement shoulder movement or something before because they have to get they have to get momentum to drop that arm down. Two and one to Springer. Escobar fields and now the throw across the diamond. Whoa. Marisnik alertly went to third, and Vargas's return throw was past the third baseman and the shortstop Adrianza so backing the play up. Speed kills, no doubt about it. No run batted in for Springer, and Marisnik played that smartly, about 30 feet off the bag, right. and as soon as Escobar released the throw, he was off. Now you can see where Escobar checked down, but uh, Marisnik was actually waiting on him to throw the ball, and I, I definitely think that uh, Vargas actually saw him waiting and, and tried to rush that throw because he knew how fast he was, and he rushed it and, and really had no chance of getting him out. He should have just ate that ball. Great heads-up play by Marisnik. Well, Tuve chops it. Fail oh, down. Is over and he'll give Altuve second base. The fan should be excused from the premises. It's a tough thing. It's the umpire's discretion. It's not an automatic second base call. It's at the umpire's discretion. And Altuve runs well. He probably would have almost certainly would have gotten second base anyway. But if the shortstop can play the carom it's conceivable on a ball like that that the runner would only get first base if not for the fan that's interference. Foul. That's a foul no, ball. I think it's a fair ball. I don't know if it went over the bag it, it, it's a fair ball but it, I think it was foul. Paul Molitor I think is talking about that. He's going to make a pitching change here but I think he stopped at Ted Barrett to ask why the ball the ball went right over the bag it looked like to me yeah. but 
to ask about the placement of the runner Altuve and if it was a slower runner Brian McCann or somebody like that they might have had a better argument. So Hildenberger comes in and he gets two ground balls one of them caught by Escobar and the other one passed him down the line. Just inside the foul line near home plate you'll see right there and then crossed the bag and landed just on the other side of the foul line and we can show two or three different angles nobody got a better look at it than John Dump Payne and I think he got it right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're not convinced. <laughs> not really. <laughs> I mean <laughs> but you know what it's, it's tough to kind of look at it it's, we can't get a good angle on it. If it goes over the bag if, uh, as in fair territory it's, it's fair but it went foul after the after the bag so I don't know if it went over the bag I don't think it ever went over the bag. Here is Reddick 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and Buddy Boshears in to face the lefty holding the ball delivering a breaking ball strike one. What did I tell you about two base balls that have eyes. Yeah. And here's another multi hit game right single in the first inning and then a chopper ruled fair down the line for a double aided by fan interference magic wand that's his bat and there goes Altuve third safe. So Shears held the ball on his first pitch to Reddick. And El Tuve got a good read and he steals third base on pitch number two. Yeah, he saw something earlier. He never checked. Lead, yeah. yeah, he never checked him and his and he's left handed, so his back is kind of turned towards him. So he's just gonna go. He never looked back. If he looked back and checked him, El Tuve had the freeze, but he had a nice walking lead and great heads up play. He's a pest. Well the twins might challenge it. Parana. Ted Barrett coming over to ask Paul Molitor if they want to look at it. They have looked at it, won't challenge it, and Barrett trots back behind the mound. Close play at third base. Infield has to be brought in now. Already down a couple of runs. Did anybody know that Ted Barrett spa with Mike Tyson? Yes. You don't want to get into it with him. Jimenez digs it out of the dirt, one and two. Ted Barrett is a great man, good man. I always liked him. He's one of my favorites in Major League Baseball. But he's only my favorite because he spawned with Mike Tyson. <laughs> you ever see me fighting a bear? You better help the bear, but Ted Barrett, no. Foul away. Astros leading the Twins by the final score. The Twins won by last night. 
Ryan Presley up. Fastball just off the plate. Two and two. Expected that at some point soon, Greg Breslow will join the Twins relief corps, giving them provided Bo Shear stays with the club and he's pitched well enough to stay. The Twins would have three left handed relievers in with Rogers, Bo Shears, and Breslow. And oh, nice. Nice pitch. Needs to be a throw to first. Oh, no. And here comes Altuve. Great base running by the Astros again. The pitch blocked by Jimenez. He had to throw the first to complete the strikeout. And Altuve streaks home with an awfully big run. Vargas takes so long to get rid of that ball that they, they have to take another chance once he threw the ball the first. Just took a chance. It's a, it's a good pitch, a great pitch by Bashirs. And he get there and it, look at the time timing of uh, Altuve. He saw it. He knew he possibly was going to throw it, and he anticipated the throw. But it took so long for Vargas to get rid of that ball. And Jimenez, I think, claiming that Altuve may not have touched the plate, but he you can see his fingers getting the back edge of the plate. Impressive base running this inning by the Astros. Very impressive. Marisnik. Aggressively running the bases leading to the first run this inning. And then on a strikeout with the ball rolling free about three feet in front of home plate, necessitating a throw. And as soon as Jimenez threw to first, Altuve streaked home. All you kids out there that are watching this game, that's how you play the game. And again, you don't win 61 ball games without doing little things like that right. Can talk about the lineup hitting 290, all the home runs on a pace to score 860 runs or whatever it is now, pitching well. But it's the little things that they've done here today that might be the difference in the ball game. And beyond that, I mean, you look at where, how the runs have scored. The Twins with not their A lineup out there. Mowers not at first base. Buxton not in center field. We saw Rosario kind of take a a circle route to the on the uh, double that a Aoki hit ball uh, hit in front of Grossman and he played it on a hop where Rosario may have come in and tried to make the catch and you as we said in the open the twins might have won the ball game last night because of their defense well it's 5 2 Houston because the twins haven't had their regular defenders out there in this series finale. I mean, would you rather do one big thing well or many things well? And that's what that's what the Astros yep. bring to the table. They can do many things well, and uh, and you know, not offense is not just hitting. Offense is also base running, and and that's what those guys are doing well. They they hit the ball. They have good at bats, but also the offense doesn't stop because you're on first, second, or third. That's still your offense, and these guys are taking the extra 90 feet because of their speed and instincts and athletic ability. And that's what I love about this Astros team. And the strikeout ends the inning, but the Astros run the base as well, force the issue with the Twins, score a couple of runs, and you're watching Twins Baseball presented by State Farm.
challenge the Cubs the Indians whoever the Astros for that matter they acquired a couple of relief pitchers today from Oakland they got Ryan Matson and Sean Doolittle from the Oakland A's Astros are looking for bullpen help but they don't need to worry about this guy he's been awfully good Chris Davinsky and a strike over the inside corner where fires tease the twins with an occasional fastball and a lot of change ups and breaking balls they'll uh, get a change up from Davinsky with a little more heat 93 94 miles per hour on the fastball there's the change up and Rosario's behind in the count 0 and 2. Davinsky actually pit mixes his pitches up well he has he has a cutter as well. That was pretty good he threw it to um, Grossman the other night it was pretty filthy. And on three pitches Rosario's gone the last two change ups one away. That's quick work. Yeah that was that was pretty quick work. There you go 93 started off with a fastball and just broke him off proper. Showed him the fastball and got him with two change ups and now Chris Jimenez excuse me this is Zach Granite hitting for Jimenez. And he takes ball one. It's like he shows the fastball early and then tries to break you off with off speed late and finish you. He keeps the ball down as well. Granite. One for 13. The ball hit fairly well to right center Get out. field. Get out. Oh. And on the edge of the track, hauled in by Reddick. Two down. I guess they could say that to me. Don't panic, Tory. You got a man oh, there. It's uh, the hardest ball that Granite has hit in the bigs, and it's a long fly out. Two away, and now uh, Adrianza. Adrianza cranked a home run, then he got a single. Chopping one up the middle. Interesting homestand to see what Paul Molitor does with his shortstop position. Jorge Polanco struggled at the plate a lot. Adrianza, if anything, he's hit a lot better than the Twins anticipated. Two hits again here today. This one lifted down the right field line. A long run for Reddick. Still running, and he got there. A foul ball catch. Impressive when you consider where he was when the pitch was thrown. He's pretty good out there. A one, two, three, eighth inning, and a quick one at that.
what third inning on Friday night the Twins have pitched this Astro lineup much better than they did certainly at Target Field but they're in danger of losing two out of three Ryan Presley into pitch to the Astros in the eighth inning and Presley delivering the ball one Presley Presley has really good stuff a really good curveball. Great fastball, 95 and 98. I think he is the relief equivalent of Kyle Gibson in terms of what he's been able to do this year. Gibson has been a disappointing starter for the Twins, and Presley's had some disappointing outings, spent some time in the minor leagues as well. Jason Castro doing the catching here in the eighth. The Twins were counting on both pitchers very heavily coming into the start of the season. Gibson although he had a good outing here today has had a disappointing 2017 and Presley's kind of had the same thing going for him out of pen. Yeah, I mean he's, you're only as good as your last start. This last start Gibson pitched pretty well because of course the first half he, he had a rough time that got him demoted you know to triple A. Uh, but you know since he's been back he's been a little better. Uh, this last start he was really good. He showed some fight and desire. Uh, Ryan Presley went down and got demoted got down to triple A and now he's back and trying to make adjustments. Hopefully these guys. To Hopper to Escobar. Over to Vargas one away. Let's figure some things out. Hey last time you're going to get a chance to read this don't screw it up. <laughs> this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And it, in the accounts of descri and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. Dispersed. <laughs> <laughs> not disseminated. They have enjoyed working with you this weekend, and we'll get a chance to do what one more series later this year in, in Detroit. Is that right? Definitely. I'll see you guys in mid-August in Detroit. But now you're going to be around. You know, I mean, this is an important month for the the Twins and the other 29 teams. You're going to be involved in the in the uh, yeah. uh, strategy moving forward, shall we say, right? <laughs> definitely. I, I, I'll definitely be in Minnesota while you guys are out on the road. Be in Minnesota and then make some trips down to the minor leagues, probably in uh, Cedar Rapids, and see what those guys are doing yeah. there and, and be on my way. Hopefully, get to get a chance to see Royce play. I mean, uh, Royce Lewis down there in, uh, in, in rookie ball. Yeah. Gonzalez, the batter. Takes a strike over the inside corner. Just you know, with a little prodding, see if he can get Sonny Gray from the Oakland A's and not give up anybody important. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. So you see want a steal? A steal? Yes. Okay. Work on that. Sonny talk Gray. With, talk with Thad and Derek or Garrett Cole of the Pirates too. If you can, if you can get him without giving anything up. I don't think it works that way. It doesn't. No, I, I mean I read Twitter. I, I I see the trades that that fans want pulled off. It's like a skittle <laughs> and a jawbreaker. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> quite get the analogy, but I think it makes some sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, you want nothing. <laughs> Just, all you got to do is bite down on a skittle. Try to bite down on a jawbreaker. <laughs> huh? Okay. All right. I, I, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> I got all kinds of sand. I'm right. from the south, man. Come on. Two down. <laughs> Here is Bregman. You know the Nationals beefed up their bullpen. Maybe they don't need Max Scherzer anymore. See if he can get him. For free? No, no. Give up like a 13th round, 15th round draft pick, something no. like that. See if the Nationals will bite you, on that. You're going to have to give up the top 13 prospects in the organization for <laughs> Max Scherzer. <laughs> Big contract, too. Hopefully the Nationals. That's not my money. It's not your money. Who cares about that? Right? It's yeah. easy to spend somebody else's money. We're employed. If they pay for him, <laughs> then we get fired. <laughs> Budget cuts. So if they pay for him, we don't get paid. Is that the way that works? Yes, I'm telling oh, you. Oh, then forget that. Yeah, it's less money, folks. Backhanded nice by Escobar. Long throw across. A beautiful play. And Presley has a good one, two, three, bottom of the eighth. We'll see if the 
Twins can uh, steal some runs in the top of the ninth against the Astros. are losing 5-2. The Indians have just gotten underway. Trevor Bauer's already been knocked out in the first inning for the Indians. He's given up four runs. And the Indians have some issues. Andrew Miller's got a hot spot on a finger. And he was taken out last night. Kipnis and Chisholm Hall are on the disabled list. Twins will try to steal one here against one of the best in the game, Ken Giles. Brian Dozier takes down and away ball one. Ken Giles throws pretty hard. He throws some fire. And um these guys gonna have to jump on that fastball and try to get them early because uh, you don't want to see that slaughter. One and zero oh to Brian Dozier starting the ninth. He takes ball two, two and zero. Oh. Well, Dozier is accepting to the rule. They're gonna throw the slaughter to him early. We need base runners right now. Trying to set things up for Sano, who hits third this inning. Played three and oh. Here you go. Make them throw two. Can't hit a three run jack with nobody on. That's some of your southern wisdom, too. Oh, yeah. It's just, you know, from the south. What do you expect? <laughs> hey, you're a Texas native now, right? You just live over the. Uh, over a little bit west of here in the Dallas area, right? Yep, I'm in the Dallas area with uh, the, the Troy and Matt Kemp. We're all hanging out together. Three and one to the leadoff man here in the top of the ninth. 96 and a foul back to the screen. Dozier, Grossman, and Sano. And the Twins hope quite a few more after that. After that swing right there, I, I doubt if Doge would get that fastball again. He looked good off that fastball, the last pitch. Definitely a slider right here. I've been wrong before. And a base hit through the That's open what right I'm side of about. the infield. That's what I'm talking about. That big hole over there taking vent. Finally. Way to go, Dozier. And the leadoff man is on here in the night. With the shift, they had a shift on him, and that hole is open there between second base and first base. Nobody's there. It's a lot of hits over there. 
Make them get back to where they need to be. You hit there five times in a row. They got to play straight again. Here's Grossman. And a big at bat here with the power of Sano on deck. Grossman can get aboard. The tying run will come to the plate. And there's a pitch down low, ball one. You know this. Grossman may strike out, but he will force Giles to throw strikes. Definitely. He has a you know, great plate awareness. And um, I, I definitely think uh, a guy in this situation right now, when you need base runner runners, you want Grossman at the plate because he's going to work that guy to death and try to create a walk for Sano to get to the plate. Perfect scenario. Sano on at the plate with a man on first and second. Grossman with a single and three trips. Line a single to right field back in the third inning. There you go. Up and away, 2 and 0. Make him throw two strikes. Well, he does a pretty good job of understanding the situation, and he'll take at least one here, I would think. Now he takes a strike. A big strikeout guy. Walks usually not much of a problem. Two and one to Grossman. Uh, two and two. And five. Keep working, Grossman. Uh, third baseman Bregman plays well off the line after the second strike. Throw a defend, fastball. Defend against the bunt, and then with two strikes, you don't worry about that anymore. At least they're not. All the way. I like to see Grossman shoot that that ball over there. That keeps him on all the pitches. Set a pitcher on the mound who throws as hard as Giles does. You can hit it over there unintentionally, right? Yeah. Just being a little late on the fastball. Definitely. Stay short. Try to poke it over. I'm not saying you're going to get a hit. I'm not saying. That you're going to hit the ball, but your mindset has to be that way. Down and in three and two. Grossman does that so well, working the count. Entered the game seventh in the league in on base percentage. Sano on deck is tenth. Full count. Nice. Walked him. A great walk by Robbie Grossman. And here comes Sano as the tying run. Perfect scenario. You got Sano up there who can hit it out the park. And then you got Max Kepler, lefty, that loves fastballs and has the power to hit it out the park. So. Love what we have brewing here. Now here's the pitches that he's he's thrown to him. He was trying to stay away from him, probably to get him to roll over. But Grossman wasn't biting. Well, the Twins have a chance with their premier power hitter at the plate representing the tying run. Today, Sano has struck out twice, once looking, once swinging, and fouled out to Bregman. This scenario, this scene is from a movie, a baseball movie. It's a home run to tie the game up. Breaking ball down and away, and a swing and a miss. Everybody gets fastball except the big guy. Only one play to make, and that's to first. Sano grounding it into the shift. But with the middle infielders converging, no one was at the second base bag. So Sano taps out. Dozier to third, Grossman to second, Kepler to the plate. 
to go home tomorrow and Aaron Judge who has not uh, been hitting home runs lately will have his uh, first look at target field. You ever seen a Nephilim. A what Nephilim. No I have no idea I don't know whether I've seen one or not what is it. It's a giant. OK. It's Aaron Judge. OK. Well I'll see one tomorrow then I guess here's Max Kepler 0 for 3. True Nephilim. Or fouls it over the Twins dugout one strike. I think Twins he... have bench players Maurer and Polanco available, but behind Kepler is Vargas with his power potential. Dozier singled, Grossman walked. The Twins have a chance here in the ninth in Houston. He's not trying to put anybody on. He's going to come after you. Kepler drives it to left, but Aoki is right hey, there. Hey, be careful. Right. And Dozier comes home on a line drive to left. The Twins are down, down to their last out. I don't think he got good wood on the ball. Kind of jammed him a little bit. That's why it didn't go as far as it sounded. And now Vargas. He started the scoring with a tape measure home run halfway up into the second deck here at Minute Maid Park. That was back in the second inning. I mean, you have to go after Vargas. Vargas got a fastball. It was about 89 miles per hour, and he clicked on it and hit it a long way in the second. Yeah, he got a fastball down the middle and drove it out of the park over 450 feet. But that fastball was like 89-90. This is like 97 to 99. Got to be ready, but there's no way they're going to put him on base. They got to go after him. You don't want the, the winning run at the plate. Escobar. Swing and a miss. Got an off speed pitch at 88. I think they keep throwing that because he can, if he hits the fastball, he can hit it anywhere. He's That's late. The thing. You talk about the velocity that he has, but his breaking pitch is as fast as Fire's fastball. Yeah. <laughs> Was pretty good. One strike. Great analogy, Dick. Check swing, one and one. Another breaking ball. They're going to keep throwing it. Gonna, you have to keep throwing him off speed. He has a rough time hitting change up, blowing away, and trying to go the opposite way. That's his weakness. You stick with it. But if you throw that fastball, he has a chance to go, you know, all all fields with all his power that he has. He can go left, left center, right center, and right field. That one landed well in front of the plate. Another breaking ball. The flip side of that argument, and this is just, you know, somebody who loves the game, but people talk about you quickening up somebody's bat by throwing them off speed pitches. I mean, do you think Kenny Vargas can catch up to 97, 98 miles per hour? And, you know, if he throws all this off speed, actually, you don't quicken his bat, you slow his bat because now you got his mind trained to an off speed, and then when he throws that 97, it makes it look like it's 105. No, well, it's a 2 1 count. Escobar on deck. 84. And awkward swing by Vargas. And now you, you can right here you can throw a fastball up and in and jam them or not try to throw a strike make them chase the pitch all hard and in and then go back to the all speed. His weakness is the all speed change up to down and away. He can stay on the ball and go to left center. He gives himself a chance to hit the ball. Jam him a dribbler to the right side. Yeah. And the Astros win the series to the well, I had a good time, man, watching these guys play. Both both teams are really good teams. The Twins have done some great things, and the Astros have done some better things. And it was a, a great, great game to watch. Good team to watch. The Twins did what they had to do. I'm pretty sure they're going to bounce back. They're a good team, man. They've, they've done a great job this year. Anthony the uh, difference in the game as it turned out the two runs that the Astros got with their expert base running late in the ball game the two runs 
ended up being the difference in the game with the Twins coming up a couple short. Yeah, that definitely was uh, the deciding factor. I mean, the, the base running Altuve and Jason Marisnik, what they did, man, was very special. Kids who were watching at home, that's how you play the game, and that's why these guys are the best team in baseball.